A Stranger Comes to Town Outsiders are special. They are twetchous twixters, or wascoey wabbits, or no-good varmints like Bugs Bunny. They are holy figures like Jesus. Magicians like Dr. Seuss's famous Cat in the Hat. They are public relations constructs, such as the Republican Party's Ronald Reagan, who legend would have it, foresaw that by building up the U.S. military arsenal, he could bring about the collapse of the Soviet Union. When the stranger comes to town, the sword is pulled from the stone, and the little boy becomes a king. The dead are resurrected from their grave. The hunter shoots the duck, even though it is rabbit hunting season. And the U.S. president tells the Soviet general secretary, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. The story of the stranger coming to town is such an attractive narrative that when George W. Bush ran for president, he claimed that he was an outsider to Washington, even though his father had been president, and even though his mentor, Dick Cheney, was a former U.S. Defense Secretary and had also been a congressman and the CEO of an oil drilling services company and U.S. Department of Defense contractor called Halliburton. George W. Bush promised to clean up government by doing something called privatization, whereby the U.S. government pays out money to companies such as the one that Dick Cheney used to be the CEO of. When the stranger comes to Jerusalem, he brings with him enthusiasm, and he also brings uncertainty, the possibility of conflict, the hope of renewal and redemption. And with the changing of the order, the inevitability of chaos. The stranger feeds the hungry. The stranger washes those who are unclean. Though he says, blessed are the peacemakers. Yet there are wars and rumors of wars. Other contenders attempt to steal the spotlight. The authorities see the stranger as a threat. False charges are leveled. Crucifixion is the result. Or the stranger might be assimilated into the very power structure that he promised to change. Someday that stranger might even have a postage stamp printed celebrating his lifestyle, his longevity as a celebrity, his friends and his associates, and his many accomplishments. When Ronald Reagan was president, a popular president in his second term, he held a summit with the Soviet General Secretary Mikhail Gorbachev in a place called Reykjavik, Iceland. The two leaders, both of whom had risen to power suddenly, like strangers from out of town, came close to an agreement to ban all nuclear weapons. Never since then has there been serious talk of such a ban.